making same day delivery possible with AI and robots. I'm Tanya Hall, and my guest is Lior Alazari, co founder and CEO of Envia Robotics. Welcome, Lior. Glad to be here. In what area does Envia Robotics specialize, and what path did you follow uh, to start the company? So Envia Robotics specializes in uh, robotic solutions to the warehouse industry. And in particular, we're handling all the movements inside the warehouse. So every time you're moving these little items um, that needs to be done for fulfillment, our robots do that. How is the e-commerce warehouse robotics challenge different than any of the other types of warehouse robotics? So in the past, the uh, e-commerce didn't really exist. You know, I still remember ordering things off a catalog and uh, you know, waiting 60 days for it to arrive. It was like Christmas every single time because you forgot you ordered it and then it showed up in the mail. Um, ever since Amazon has sort of pushed the envelope and you know, introduced one hour delivery, which has been amazing. Um, in fact, uh, I attribute a lot of our company and a lot of our company's success and growth rate due to the e-commerce, due to our ability to order parts uh, and, and test them and be able to, um, you know, iterate very, very quickly. Now, that has created a huge pressure on warehouses, in particular, a lot of the traditional warehouses that have not been in the past automated, where you need to go to a completely different workflow. The needs are extreme where you have a lot of orders, a lot of flow flowing through the warehouse on a day-to-day -day basis, talking about millions of SKUs moving through the warehouse, and that's creating a huge challenge. And one of the things people are really not great at is this repetitive task where under a lot of pressure, um, you know, you have to go run around and imagine, uh, you know, 1.2 million square foot facilities are, you know, many, many football fields wide, and you gotta run through that and pick an item um, and really, this hasn't been able to scale. So that's one of the reasons we you know, developed our system is to allow a lot of our customers to be able to provide that throughput, to provide that need with the same labor workforce that they have. What degree of productivity improvements should e-commerce operations expect to see when adding stock picking robots into their mix? So our particular uh, system provides, you know, four to five X productivity improvement. And that's a really good point that you touched on. It's the productivity improvement. If you look at a lot of automation, the goal of automation is to make people more productive. And, you know, in one hand, you can have a person run around, um, you know, in the warehouse, pick items, uh, or you can have them be still and operate. We call them robot wranglers, robots who are now picking the items and working on the items. So in some sense, that person is a lot more productive now because with one person, you're able to fulfill thousands and thousands of orders. And that's really the goal. And as our systems increase, as, as robotic systems increase, we're able to provide more and more productivity from that person, which in the end, this is how we're gonna be able to scale. Uh, you know, We're not gonna be in a society where half of the people order things online and the other half are working in the warehouse fulfilling it for us. So the goal is how do you get one person to be able to fulfill thousands of items? And by the way, doing a much better job as opposed to a, you know, a repetitive job, he's more problem solving now. He's more dealing with uh, robots. What issues must be considered when large moving robots work together with humans and how do the human employees actually interact with them? So there's a couple of um, interactions we have from pickers who actually you know, manipulate the items themselves. So for doing packing, or QC or cycle counts um, to dealing with the robots, like I mentioned, the robot wranglers. Um, I, right now, the biggest challenges that we have is that robots are not able to solve their own problems. They're great at doing the repetitive tasks, but you know, we have a we manipulate totes all day long and move these totes around. If the tote bulges a little bit, the robots don't really realize what's going on. And yes, you know, it involves a human to solve that problem. We can use that as a feedback, teach the robot new tricks and, you know, and be able to handle that particular scenario now. But we always need that person to be able to think and to be able to really problem solve, which, like I said, robots right now are not great at. They're really good at once you give them that task, they can do that over and over again without complaints you know, and, and do that very well. But if they encounter any kind of challenge, that's where you know, people come in. How does artificial intelligence help coordinate the flow of the robots throughout the warehouse? 
So we use AI a lot to manipulate a lot of the robots together. So for example, some of our deployments have over 100 robots running around inside the warehouse, and that takes a lot of coordination. And it's not just the coordination of things, it's also um, being able to adapt to the current flow of the day. People often order different things throughout the day, and the robots have to um, you know, act differently. And you can see how people sort of do that, you know, when we have uh, traffic on the freeways, if everybody goes in at once into you know, a particular lane or they start jamming up, they're not really good at coordinating together and they sort of acting individually. Where our system is acting as a whole, actually more of a swarm type of solution where each robot kind of cooperatively works together and learns of what the current process of, so for the robot, um, needs to pick up an item and go from point A to point B. Another robot knows about that and then together um, work, work in parallel to get the highest workflow. So a robot might slow down just a tiny bit before an intersection to let another robot go through because that robot, if he goes through, will able to open up a lot more of another flow somewhere else. So that's the kind of cooperation that um, enables a lot of the robots to, you know, to, to operate very efficiently and that requires constant learning of the current flow. And like I mentioned, the current day-to-day -day, uh, operations where people order different parts, different items. Uh, in fact, all the way to even changing the locations of the totes. If there's a very popular item, we move it closer, the robots know about it, and the next robot will pick it from a closer position. What technologies on the horizon today that might usher in the next big leap in the warehouse robotic performance category? So the biggest challenge that we see right now is actually fine manipulation. People are really good doing, you know, very detailed work with their hands, which is very difficult right now to achieve in both technology wise, but also cost wise. So people are really good and very cost effective in manipulating the single bits of pieces. You imagine we bring a tote, we have lots of beads in there and you got to pick the yellow bead from all the other beads. Right now it's a very, very expensive um, proposition. So that there's a lot of um, people working on that, on the you know, robotic arms, or robotic hands. You both have to increase the hardware end to get the, the, the hand to be very um, adaptive you know, to the various environments, but also the technology, the vision systems to understand, to see what's going on and to do that. And that's one of the things that are coming out. Uh, right now, we're really good at gross manipulations. That's what our robots do. So we're not deal dealing with the details, but we're dealing, for example, moving boxes, moving toads, things that are a little bit easier to manipulate. Lior Elazari, co-founder and CEO of Invia Robotics. If somebody wants to connect with you, how can they do that? Uh, they can go on our website, uh, www.inviarobotics.com. They can also send us an email to info at inviarobotics.com. We'd be happy to answer anything. Sounds good. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that at tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.